Hey, Zach here. Today we are going to start a new series, which is W3 Schools How To Series. Um, W3 Schools is a um, very famous tutorial website for front end developers. Um, it provides uh, tutorials including HTML, CSS, JavaScript, even SQL and PHP. And uh, the my favorite is the how to section. It teach you teaches you how to build a slideshow or light box, even parallax effect. Yep. So it's very useful and a great resource for front end developers. But the thing is, um, it's text-based, so I guess it's a good idea to make some videos about the um, how-to section. So there, here we are. And the first thing I want to talk about is the responsive web layout. So uh, in 2019, all, web, all new web pages will be responsive. And there are three ways to implement a responsive layout. The first one is float, and then flex, and lastly we have a CSS grid. And of course, you you need to use them with a media query. Uh, among them, CSS grid is the latest uh, because it's quite new, so people worry about the. Um, browser support situation. Um, you can check the um, browse, browser support on this website. Can I use? Actually, you can see for all the major uh, browser, CSS Grid is already fully supported. But for uh, some other like IE, it's still um, partly partially supported. So um, actually, I would suggest just go with CSS Grid because it's designed for grid layout, which is perfect for web page layout. And most of the browser have already supported CSS Grid. I mean, only when you know that your visitors are using very old browsers, uh, you sh otherwise, you should just use CSS Grid. Flexbox is also rather new, but um, the browser's support is better than CSS Grid. And the mainstream in the front end has already adopted uh, Flexbox. Bootstrap is a good example. And But the thing is, um, Flexbox is designed for one dimension layout, like a row or floating in a row um, or a uh, column when but a um, page layout is is usually a two dimension um, design like a grid so flexbox may not be the best choice unless you are doing a design just for like mobile or something that goes from top to button or left to right so um but because um Flexbox was introduced before CSS Grid. Many people adopt it to uh, form page layout. So it's quite common for um, web pages um, nowadays. So we are going to talk about it too. And the last one is Float. Float um, was designed for uh, things like text around images. But um, before Flexbox and CSS Grid, we don't have better tools for layout design, so Froze was used. But it caused quite some problems. So um, the using of Froze for uh, layout design is fading out now. But still, um, because it was so popular, you can still see it everywhere. That's why you need to know about like how to do a float uh, responsive layout. 
So today we will start with floats layout. It's very easy to create a floats layout. You need to follow basically three steps. First, you throw all the elements that are going to be responsive to the same direction, like left or right. And then you control the width of each element with a percentage. Finally, change the width of the elements through media query for different screen sizes. And here is the example provided by W3School. You can see the screen size on the top right. When you shrink down the width, when it reach uh, below 800, the sidebar will be moved to the button of the content. That's how you re uh, achieve um, responsiveness. And then, um, yep, let's take a look at the code. There are two parts you need to pay attention to. The first one is the setting for the two columns. So the left column is the content. It is set to 75% of width and then throw to left. And for the right content column, which is the sidebar, is set to 25% and then also flow to LED. And it has a left padding of 20 px. Yep. And then um, the second part is the media query. Um, the breaking point is set to 800 px. So it use it uses um, max width. So when the screen size is lower, below 800 px, the following style will be applied. So it sets um, the left and right column to 100% of width and no padding. That's um, the one column layout. Yep. And that's it. That's how you make a flow responsive uh, web page. And we can do some uh, improvement to the example. Like I like the idea of mobile first, which means you design the from the smallest um, screen version, which is the mobile version, and then move up to a larger version, like a desktop version. So um, it's the opposite of um, the, the example on W3 schools. So it's the idea is pretty simple. You just switch the content in the media query with the corresponding uh, parts outside. Yep, so here we go. We set the left column to 100% to take over the whole um, screen size. And from to left, that doesn't change. And then the right column also to 100%. So, and then no padding. Right, that's the early version, the, the smaller version. And then in the media query, we use uh, mean width rather than the max because we want to apply it to when the screen size is larger than 800 px. So the left colon is set to 75%, and then the right colon 25%, and also add a left padding 20 px. And you will see the exactly same result. Uh, that's how you do a, a mobile first um, approach to uh, create a fraud responsive website. And you may have also noticed the top navigation in this example is also responsive. And you can try to um, modify it to be mobile first by yourself as an exercise. If you want to take a look at the code, uh, the full code, I created a um, GitHub repository for this series. I will upload all my code um, in this series to this repository. You can check it out. Um, that's all for today. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.